Hi everyone, in today's video I wanted to show you how I do my weekly manicures and I'm going to start, I think it's going to be a series, so I'm going to start with very very simple tools and then every week I can do my manicure using different tools so that way you can see how I use different tools because everybody has different tools. So this is the first video and I'm going to, like I said, use very very simple stuff. So, um, orange wood stick, the file that I actually got from Blue Cocotte which is really nice, it's 281-80 grit. Um, Blue Cross that I poured in this dropper bottle. Very, very effective stuff. And I also have a, a water, so it's just a spray bottle, big spray bottle. You can just use a little bowl of water if you want to. 99% alcohol spray. I'm gonna actually make a list in a description box. And then I'm going to just use one coat of nitrocellulose free nail polish because I don't want my nails too yellow. And if you want, you can use Dazzle Dry, but this is just very, very simple clear coat. All right, so first of all, I'm going to show you because I get a lot of questions. A lot of you guys are a little bit confused about pushing back the living skin. And a lot of people call it a pushing back the cuticles, but this is not this is not pushing back the cuticle, it's pushing back the living skin. So a lot of you are asking if you can do that while wearing a nail polish, because I recommend doing this daily. So, or daily or every second day. So this is what you want to do. Even if you have nail polish on, you can still just nudge, nudge back, nudge, nudge back this living skin, just like this, that's it. So this is what you want to do every day on a regular basis. So this is not a cuticle, this is a living skin. So there are two skins really on top of the nail here. One is the living skin, and then underneath, barely visible, is a cuticle. So very often people think that this whole area, that this skin is cuticle, and they call this skin cuticles. So they say, you know, they have bad cuticles or anything like that. You can't have a bad cuticle. You just have cuticle on top of the nail plate here, which is barely visible, which can never bleed, can never be infected. It's just a bunch of dead skin cells that are left on the nail. But this skin here, all of this, it actually is part of the living skin. And this skin uh, sometimes gets stretched. So let's say if you if the skin around your nail is stretched and pulled, or it's you call it overgrown, because sometimes you know when people are cutting it, it's it gets calloused. So if you have that issue, and if you want to start doing the weekly manicures, what I would recommend is kind of going a step back and basically using carousel cream daily first and just nudging the skin back. So don't worry about the cuticle, just nudge the skin back. You don't have to do it all the way um, because you just want to train that skin to stay back. And at first, of course, it's still going to be thicker, it's going to be longer, but if you keep nudging that skin, it's a living skin and skin can shrink. So this is eventually going to shrink because what happens is, as the nail is growing, the skin, when it's stuck to the nail, it's just stretches with it. So it's not really overgrowing, it's just stretching. So basically what you have is just, you have stretched skin around the nails. So now, kind of an important thing. So I had some surface damage on this nail. It's barely visible here, but it's still here. So what I've been doing, and this is what I recommend doing, is just keeping the damaged nails short. So I don't try to have any length. I just keep shortening that nail until the damage grows out. So the damage is grown out to here. So I'll keep trimming this nail until the damage is completely grown out. So this is important to remember. Don't try to grow your nails when they're still damaged. Now I'm going to remove this nail polish. What I normally recommend is removing the polish at the end of the week, doing a warm oil soak, and then polishing the next day. This is the best way of maintaining very nice and healthy nails. So this is how I remove nail polish. So I saturate cotton with pure acetone. There is no need to use anything else really. And I just place it. So I do one hand at a time normally. Okay, so now I'm going to push down and I'm not going to try to rub now this nail polish into the skin. I'm just going to push down. I'm going to feel for the, feel for the resistance and then just slide it down. Okay, so now I have all this red mess, so I'm going to put this away and use a clean piece. And again, move down. So you see you have a nice and clean 
nail because if you just press down and start rubbing it into the skin it just you know goes all over the place okay so i'm going to start my manicure with shortening and shaping my nails now i get a lot of comments people are they're often very upset about the fact that i file back and forth but you know what there was absolutely no reason why you can't file back and forth so the reason why the nails split and um or they are uh, rough is because they're either damaged or you have filed with a very coarse grit so if you filed with a very coarse grit or coarse grit what you can do later on you can just take a buffer and just smooth the nail this way and the nail is going to feel nice and smooth so yes i'm going to keep this nail quite short as you can see i file back and forth and i never have any issues with my nails they're not the prettiest looking but you know that is what it is so this is actually this is 180 grit i'm gonna see how the 240 feels like i actually probably prefer the 180 my nails are strong and there was no reason for me not to use 180. so you know what if you um don't know how to file your nails or don't know how to shape them normally i recommend just following the shape of your nail bed this is the strongest shape usually so i'm just following the pink part and i'm going to show you with this nail because not always the the nail bed is very even so i'm going to show you and explain how to how to do this So now, I always imagine a line running down. So now this one, I used to bite my nails, and I think it's natural for many people have uneven nail beds. And I actually get a lot of comments, people asking me why they have uneven nail beds and how to correct it. And to a degree, I don't think we can correct it. We just have to learn to live with it. So what I do is I imagine this line, and I first start to um, shape the side that's more attached to the nail so i'm not going to follow this curved upside i'm going to follow this one okay and now again imagining this line i'm going to make a a mirror image of this side so now the white is not going to match up but it is what it is i usually do it from this angle now look how the nails look from a different angle there you go as you can see this shape is now symmetrical now this one is uneven as well so i'm going to do the same thing with this nail so as you can see i'm i'm not filing i'm not starting to file from here like this because when you do this very often you can over file the sides so i've placed the file underneath and i don't really press too much into into the sides because you don't want to break the seal so i'm going to do the one side Okay, and now do the other side. And you know what? If you are unsure or if you just want to learn how I do these things, I know it sounds silly, but just keep watching the same video over and over again. Because this is how we even learn as professionals, as, as nail professionals or beauty professionals. Uh, because we very often, at the beginning of our careers or at any point that we want to learn something, we really kind of shadow other people. So learning is uh is a funny thing sometimes you don't know that you're learning but you are learning just by observing others without even um being explained anything so i like to file my thumb from this angle okay you can see that this one is very uneven too 
So I'm going to make this imaginary line here. Okay, now I'm going to repeat. Normally I do it actually over my knee. It's just more comfortable for me to do it this way. So now what I'm looking at is just this edge. And you know what? You can actually do this shaping when you still have the nail polish on. For some people, this is easier because the white part is not going to throw you off. There we go. So now again, by the way, my nails are not dirty. And I know they kind of look maybe dirty. What happens is I've been wearing nitrocellulose free nail polish on this hand and a polish that does have nitrocellulose on this hand. So this hand is a little bit more stained. It has a little bit yellowing. It's not too bad, but it does. And it's absolutely normal for the nails to have variation in color on the free edge. So I actually made another video about it, which I will link in the description box. So first I'm going to shape the side that's more connected, okay? To the nail. And now I'm going to repeat on the other side, trying to make the end more even. Okay, this is good. So now, imaginary line. This one is more connected. And eventually you won't have to do that because eventually you'll just know how to shape your nails. But if you're a beginner, sometimes this can help. Okay, so this is shaped. Now I'm going to the other side. And you know what? The more you do it, the better you will become. And this is why also I recommend doing the manicures weekly because you won't have as much to do. And because you will be doing it more often, so you, you will become much better at it quicker. And don't be afraid that at first it's not going to look, you know, super professional. It's absolutely normal. Just keep doing it. I usually recommend, um, I usually compare this to playing an instrument because you, your hand has to be flexible. You have to be able to grab the file in a certain way. So this is just part of, um, it's a learning process. Okay, you see how wonky this nail is? So I'm going to first shape this side. So I'm just following the nail bed, the shape of the nail bed, okay? So no, this one is really, really wonky because I um, used to write a lot in school. So I developed this bump. This is actually very common. But now I do, you know, all this work still with brushes, the nail polish bottles, electric files. So this, this nail is very, very wonky because of this bone being very wonky. So now I'm going to just... Okay, so this is going to be your most, the strongest shape. So now this one is actually shocking me pretty even. See how uneven the nail beds are? These ones are pretty, they're not very short, they're very medium, I would say. This one is longer. So sometimes when I wear nail polish, which is not often, but when I used to wear nail polish more often, what I would do is I would shorten this nail almost completely to um, make the nails look more even when they're polished. But now I don't wear nail polish much. So what I do is I just match the whites now. So the free edge is the same length. So in the comment section, please let me know if you want me to do these manicures like weekly for you guys. 
and that way you can actually probably sit, sit along and just do it with me right and you can choose the tools that you have and we can do it together step by step so then you just kind of see if the shape is similar in all the nails you know nails are not going to be 100 percent perfect that's fine Now the other side, you can help yourself doing it this way. See? Sometimes having a black towel underneath helps because you can see a little bit more what you're doing. But for filming purposes, well, I usually use a white towel, but I need a white towel for filming. Now, very, very useful little tip so there are often people have these little snags or pieces of hard skin so the most important thing is to take care of your skin so this doesn't happen but it does happen once in a while if we're hard on our hands we develop these little calluses sometimes so what i recommend just obviously not picking them because you can make a huge mess uh, you can smooth that skin. So now this is, there is a big difference between dry skin and a hard skin. So if your skin is just dry, it's flaky, but it's very soft, don't do this step, okay? But if you have hard pieces that are driving you crazy that otherwise you're just going to pick, then do this step very, very gently. So what I do is I set the file down. I don't overlap the nail, just set it down and just smooth it here, okay? that's it so now you can see how i'm holding it i open this set it down and i put pressure on this edge a little bit now open the skin And then I just feel for the skin because now everything is going to look dry. So don't don't think that you have to remove the dry skin. Just feel the skin. If the skin is softer, there's nothing bugging you. Just keep going. So for this, when I work with clients, I use electric file, but I really don't recommend. And it, you, there is no need. I don't even use electric file on my nails. If you take care of your skin and your nails on a on a weekly basis you won't need additional tools. Okay, so everything feels good. Nothing is bugging me. And now the other side. So you see these little sometimes, I've been working a lot with my hands lately, so just see how my hand is. Try to repeat this. I will hold this. So I don't lift the file because now you can, once I place it down, I just move the file. I don't do this because it's easy to hit the nail. Place it down and move it. Now, pull the skin back a little bit. You see how I'm not overlapping the nail? I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. Okay, feeling. There's this little piece here that I know it's going to drive me crazy. There you go. Okay, so now this side i'm going to do it this way just so you can see mm -hmm. pull this okay my wonky finger pull the skin when i do this this gives me a lot of stability this the file is very very stable because when you're holding it this way you just you don't you don't um, you're not putting the proper pressure on the nail so hold it this way and then you can really control the file much better okay this feels better it still looks dry because there's dust now don't worry about the dryness just feel how it feels okay now pull the skin back this sometimes drives me crazy here again the most important thing is doing things bit by bit very slowly okay on this side you know i i kind of um tell people 
to think about going to the gym. You're not going to go to the gym and be able to do everything the first day, right? You're just going to do things very incorrectly, which is fine. You're going to use it if you're going for training. You're going to be using much lighter weights. That's fine. It's somewhere to start. And then once you're going on a regular basis, that's how you're going to improve. So don't aim for perfect nails at the end of this manicure. If you start seeing improvement, you're doing the right thing. So you're doing this to see improvement in your nails. Perfect, the nails are filed. So now, buffer block. I'll show you something. So you use, uh, you can use a buffer block that is um, about 180 or 220, things like that. So if the block is mm, a little bit too coarse, you can soften it with a file. And now, You can do this. And I guarantee you that you're not going to have peeling because of filing back and forth. This is how I do this. The nails now on the end are perfectly smooth. Got this one from Blue Cocotte. And you can use this as well. I'm using the 300. The 180 side is also quite good because buffer blocks have less pressure. So they are going to be always a little bit more softer. So now we're going to take care of the skin around the nails and we're going to remove the cuticle. So now, if you are not applying nail polish, there is no need for you to remove the cuticle. So if you're just someone who just likes to have nice and neat nails, this is the next step that you would want to do. Just nudge back that living skin. And don't worry about the cuticle. And you see, if you're doing this on a regular basis, there is not going to be much cuticle there. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a graph from Doug Shun, what cuticle is. So please watch this and it's going to be like a light bulb, bulb moment for you. So now I'm going to hold it this way and I'm using the side of it. See, I'm not like stabbing myself here. I'm using this side. Just not up. See again. All right, so now that you are doing your own nails, I recommend doing one hand at a time. So now knowing that the cuticle is somewhere here that it's barely visible and your nail usually have grown about one millimeter a week. So it has grown only this much. So you're not gonna have a cuticle all the way down here if you're doing your nails on a regular basis, there is no cuticle there. Because first of all, you removed it. Even if you didn't remove it, the cuticle eventually gets rubbed off when you are even using towels or even after, but after a bath or, you know, you're rubbing your hands against fabrics. So the only area where the cuticle really is left behind is in that little groove. And I also find people that wear gel polish because the, pol the gel polish is a little bit thicker on the nail. It creates more of a groove in there. So the cuticle, um, stays there without being exfoliated even with towels so i'm going to place the little bit of product on where the cuticle is on the nail not here this is the living skin it's not necessary to be there so again little drop just smear smear it around so you can even point your fingers down and then it kind of drips down a little bit of product point it down Right, move it around, point it down. So now we're going to wait, I would say two minutes, okay? 
Okay, it's been two minutes. So now very important step is to now remove the cuticle remover. And the reason why is because of this, these products, all of them are very, very alkaline and they can irritate the skin. And they can actually probably damage the nail too. So just make sure you can actually wash your hands or you can spray it with water or you can just, even if you have a bowl of water, just dip your hand there and just make sure that the product is off your nails. And off the skin. You don't have to have your hands very, very dry at this point. And what I recommend is almost doing a little circle. So now I work with almost the side of the little stick. I don't go underneath the skin and start digging underneath the skin because this the seal, you wanna respect the seal around the nails. So you're just removing whatever is sticking out, right? Just so you can polish nice and neatly. Okay, I'm going to use this. Um, this way actually it's, I can anchor my, my hand here. So you see how I'm holding? The little tool, I, I'm not digging in there. So I go from the middle down. I think this is the safest way because you're not picking up any skin because sometimes when you're going this way, you can pick up the pieces of skin. And like you see, there was barely any cuticle because I do this on, the, on a regular basis. And also I'm using the carousel or Hasserol in Poland. There's this product that's identical to carousel. It's called Hasserol. And that, all, that has salicylic acid. So salicylic acid is an exfoliant. So it also keeps everything nice and neat. Exfoliate it nicely. So now you can just use a towel and see, you can do this. Sometimes you have little pieces of skin that are stuck underneath. You can just get them out with the buffer block or you can help yourself with this little stick. Again, try to not dig too far. Be very, very gentle because nail has four seals. The sides are a seal. This is the hyponychium. It's also a seal, so you don't want to break it. And this is the cuticle. So this is also a seal. Just want to be very, very gentle. Okay, so you see there's sometimes these pieces. Okay, this one is very, very short. Okay, so now we're going to repeat the same process with the other hand. it down and two minutes okay so this is ready to go So from the middle down, can do this. from the middle, and I stay on the nail. As you can see, I almost uh, think of like windshield wipers, windshield wipers. Yeah. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you the graph which explains the cuticle and where the cuticle comes from. So please, please watch until the end of the video. That's going to make a lot of sense to you. So 
So now if you are going to polish your nails, you can give these nails about an hour for them to dry out. You don't have to, especially if you're doing just one coat of polish, but you can, it's usually recommended. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to not wait, but I'm going to show you how to snip. There is this little piece here, it's driving me nuts. So I'm gonna pick it up. And I'm not really pressing down because then you can catch, uh, you can hurt yourself. So see how now this is between and squeeze. And squeeze, no. Double checking everything, everything looks good. Okay, I'm going to flip the towel because the other side is a little wet, and I'm going to just spray and wipe. And you know, for this purpose, you can use an old kitchen towel. This it's the best because it's very, very um, lint free. You don't need special pads. I mean, I use special pads for my clients again because I'm not going to be bringing kitchen towels. Actually, one more thing that I forgot. I the reason why I forgot because I don't usually do that to myself, but I'll show you what to do in case. Okay, now there's a little skirt here. So now, if you're polishing nails, especially with like a red nail polish, or if you want um, the the polish to be placed perfectly around the nails, what you can do is you can give the area of the nail where the cuticle was a little buff okay so did you see what i do i just went like this this is a very soft buffer let's go like this so i don't place the buffer here like this and start buffing the whole surface personally i use buffer as little as i can so this is the 300 side And I place it in the middle, down, middle, down, middle, down, middle, down, middle, down, middle, down. Because now I ended up having a little bit of dust. I'm just going to dust off my nails and make sure you use clean brush so there's no oils on it. Okay, so I'm going to polish with this. Catrice Nail Repair Nail Building Base Coat. So this is actually a very nice base coat that dries very, very quickly. I really like the formula, but I'll be honest with you, I really don't think it builds anything and I don't think it repairs anything, but it's a very nice, it's a very nice base coat. But because it's nitrocellulose free, it's going to not last as long as the other polishes. So it is what it is. So what I do when I polish my nails, I get off the polish sometimes like a little bit further away and then I push up and I do one side and then the other side. As you can see, I'm doing this slowly because I'm trying to control my brush. Little bubble. Okay. I'm going to place it on the table. This polish has a different smell. It's not bad. It's just different. So if you're a beginner, I highly recommend learning how to polish with just a clear coat first. Once you get comfortable, Handling nail polish, 
because you can't really do a lot of mess with this. Once you're comfortable, then you can move on to a color. This is a good practice. So you see this dries very, very quickly. So I'm going to wait for this hand to dry, which I'm going to show, show you how many minutes it takes. So this is pretty much dry, but now the thumb has to dry, just so I don't mess it up when I'm polishing the other hand. And by the way, it's always a good idea to dry the nail polish without use of any air. So don't blow on your nails, don't use a fan. It's, it's best to dry them um, like by themselves, right? Also make sure that your room does not have a, a breeze or anything like that because that sets the nail polish up too fast. Okay, so it's been three minutes now and this is pretty dry. I'm going to twirl the brush to get off the excess, wipe it off on one side and wipe half of the other side and again the other side. You know, it's really strange. It's actually easier for me to polish my non-dominant hand. I have no idea why. Sorry, it's easier for me to polish my dominant hand with the non-dominant hand. Okay, so now I'm going to give them like five minutes to dry because this hand is almost fully dry. Just to dry this hand and then I'm going to use the oil. I really do recommend using oil after each hand wash. The reason why is that the detergents in soaps strip all the protective oils from our skin and our nails. So, but you don't have to use a lot of oil. This is how much oil I use. One drop. This is all you need. Okay. And then you can even wipe your hands with a towel. This is how much you need because you are just replacing what you just removed during the hand wash. But after a manicure, I always give myself a little treat and I do one drop per nail. I just really want the oil to soak in um, into the surrounding skin and even underneath the nails. So really this should be called an not that many companies do say that this is a skin and nail oil because this is not a cuticle oil think about it we just removed the cuticle and we're taking care of the skin around the nails the skin around the nails is not a cuticle the cuticle was on the nail plate and we removed it in order to put the nail polish nice and neatly so what we care for what we're treating here is the skin around the nails The technical term for that skin, that whole area around the nail that covers the, the nail matrix really is called proximal nail fold, but you don't have to remember that name. Just know it's a skin, it's a living skin. So that's why it should not be cut. When you treat the skin really well and when you train it to sit nice and back, you're going to have beautiful nails and you're going to have a beautiful skin around the nails, nice and healthy. See, there was nothing to cut. There was no reason to cut anything. The information in this video was based on a research done by Doug Shun, 
And this article was published in 2019. So I don't know why more educators are not sharing this information. I will post the link in the description box below the video, as well as in the comments section. At the beginning of the manicure, I nudged back this skin here, which is living skin called proximonial fold. And more precisely, the keratinized edge of the proximonial fold. And then I put Blue Cross, so the cuticle remover, on the cuticle, which is dead skin cells, and then I removed the softened cuticle from the nail plate. 